Hello everyone, welcome again to Heart America's TV. Today we will continue learning about plant nutrition. We have already covered some awesome topics like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in previous videos. But today we will learn about a particular nutrient that can easily become a problem in greenhouses and hydroponic systems when we don't know enough about it. I'm speaking about calcium. What is important to know about calcium? Calcium is a very important nutrient for cell wall formation. The cell wall is in charge of providing support and protection to the plant cell. If calcium is not available for the plant cell, cell wall formation will be affected. When a plant cell doesn't have a cell wall, necrosis will occur. Therefore, calcium helps to keep new cells growing healthy. If calcium is not available, new cells, meaning new growth, will be affected. Sounds important, right? If we want to avoid calcium deficiency, we definitely need to understand how calcium moves in plants. Calcium moves by mass flow. This nutrient is taken up by roots and delivered to the shoot via the xylem. All nutrients with this particular movement are called passive nutrients. Therefore, calcium is a passive nutrient. Calcium also, also functions as a countercation for anions in plant cell buckle and also plays a role as intracellular messenger in the cytosol. Calcium deficiency can become a problem in indoor systems, including greenhouses and also plant factories. It can affect crop quality and also yield. You can easily spot calcium deficiency by noticing brown necrotic lesions in new tissue. It can be present in fruits and also in leaves. Here we have a good example of calcium deficiency in lettuce. As mentioned, calcium can be also spotted in fruits. This symptom can be common in tomato greenhouses. Here, a clear example of calcium deficiency in tomato fruits. If you have seen this before, you probably know we call this blossom and rot. Calcium deficiency in tomato can be spotted just in fruits or can also be spotted in leaves and fruits. Why? Remember, calcium is a passive nutrient, moves within the water. Any problem with water uptake can affect how different plant organs are receiving calcium. In tomato, we can have two different scenarios. One, a plant with excessive transpiration, or second, a plant with low transpiration. Low transpiration means low water uptake, meaning calcium won't be able to reach leaves or fruits. There are particular environmental situations that can affect transpiration. Some examples are low relative humidity and high salinity content in substrates. Our next scenario is actually the most common problem in greenhouses, excess of transpiration. When plant is moving a lot of water, water moves so fast and goes directly to leaves avoiding fruits. When we have this problem, calcium deficiency is only spotted in fruits. We need then to control environment in order to solve this problem. There are different environmental variables affecting transpiration. Therefore, we most of the time need to work with environment in order to fix calcium deficiency. It is common to try to fix calcium deficiency using the ground approaches. Calcium as a passive nutrient will require most of the time to work with environment rather than fixing the nutrient formula. At least this is the most common way 
to solve calcium deficiency. Of course, it can also happen that we have some problem with the fertigation of nutrients, but most of the time when we see this problem, we can link the problem to the environment. What happens now with leafy greens? Calcium deficiency in lettuce, in lettuce is commonly triggered by bad ventilation. Research have demonstrated that vertical airflow may be a good solution to avoid calcium deficiency in lettuce. Also, when working with in plant factories, it's known that high DLI can also trigger calcium deficiency. This won't happen in greenhouses. This is a particular issue in plant factories. So in greenhouses, when we see calcium deficiency, we most of the time can link this to bad ventilation. And in plant factories, it can be caused by bad ventilation or also an excess of DLI. Now let's move to speak about calcium toxicity. Is this common? Well, I will say calcium deficiency is usually more frequent, but calcium toxicity can also happen. This can strongly reduce crop quality. It can affect germination and also reduce plant growth rate. In tomato, we can spot yellowish gold spots in cell walls around the colleagues and also in fruit shoulders. So how can we avoid calcium toxicity? Well, first, calcium is one of the nutrients that will get accumulated in closed hydroponic systems. This is because plants take up calcium slower than other nutrients. So if you're working in a closed hydroponic system, meaning you are recirculating water, you need to check your calcium quantities at least every month. Also, and more important, we need to consider water source. Calcium most of the time is already present in water source, sometimes in small quantities, but other times in high quantities. When we analyze a sample of water source, we'll, we will get the alkalinity of the water. Alkalinity refers to the amount of calcium carbonates present in water. Usually levels exceeding more than 100 ppm are considered high alkalinity levels. Now the question will be, how can I avoid having high calcium levels when mixing nutrients for a new formula? I mean, how can you calculate to have your calcium levels in order when you have a water source and you are following a recipe? One option can be to treat the water with reverse osmosis. Another option can be to treat the water with acid. And other option includes to adjust nutrition based on your water source. The best fertilizers will allow you to mix nutrients based on your water source. A perfect example is the Hort Americas fertilizers. Our fertilizers don't work alone. You must complete nutrition by adding calcium nitrate and magnesium sulfate. Some people will think this makes things more difficult to manage, but it's actually the opposite. When you are able to mix calcium nitrate and magnesium sulfate separately, you are able to adjust nutrition based on your water source. Or water source can not only be high on calcium, it can also contain high sulfates. So in order to provide a more precise nutrition, we recommend to mix nutrients based on your water source, the fertilizer content, and the plant nutrition requirement. You can get your water source quality by sending a sample of water to analysis. You can get the fertilizer content by looking the label of your product. And you can get the plant nutrition requirement by looking up articles or web page from universities. Here, I am sharing with you a useful table showing the nutrition requirement for different crops. And here we have the calcium requirements. 
If our water is high in calcium, we can adjust the amount of calcium by changing, for example, calcium nitrate quantities in our formula. If you would like to learn how to do this calculation, please join us in our next short course. The title of the short course is Fertilizer Management and Plant Nutrition. And in here, you will be able to learn how to do these precise calculations. In Hort Americas, we really want you to provide all the tools to succeed. This is why we are happy to announce we are hardly working on a new fertilizer calculator for you. You soon will be able to adjust formulas based on your water source and also different characteristics from your hydroponic system when you are using our Hort Americas fertilizer blend. So wait for this useful tool. Well, guys, that is all the information I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this session. Please subscribe to continue learning. My name is Carla Garcia, Hort Americas Technical Service. You can find me also on Instagram as Professor Growth. See you on the next video.